Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another session of the Launch and Learn series. I am Praise Benson, a junior digital marketing executive here at FutureSoft. Launch and Learn is a bi-weekly program where each staff gets to train people on topics relating to our industry. If today is your first time joining us, you are welcome. Today, Peter Faruna, our key account manager, will be facilitating this session on the topic, the future of brand marketing, emerging technologies and platforms. Kindly mute your mic as we continue with the session. And if you have questions to ask as the session goes on, kindly drop them in the chat and they'll be addressed by Peter after his presentation. Thank you for your cooperation. Over to you, Peter. All right, thank you, Praise. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peter Parona, a key account manager here at FutureSoft. Um, so today we'll be speaking about the future of brand marketing, emerging, emerging technologies and platforms, right? Um, so discussing the future of brand marketing, basically. Um, moving on, the for outline today, we'll, we'll actually speak on the um, future of brand marketing and a brief overview. And then we'll speak about uh, AI in advertising, then um, virtual reality and augmented reality in advertising, emerging platforms and media, um, identifying opportunities, and then the future outlook. Um, so I'll start off with um, a quote from Mary Mika that, st that says, the future of brand marketing lies in leveraging technology to create deeply personalized and immersive experiences. Brands that can harness the power of AI, AR, and data analytics will lead the way in building lasting consumer relationships. And from this quote, you can see that uh, one thing that was actually uh, mentioned was um, creating a deeply personalized and immer immersive experience for consumers, meaning that you also want to um, get your um, consumers involved and make them feel like they are part of the journey, right? Uh, every step of the way. So yes, that's uh, one one key strength in um, the future of brand marketing, right? Um, so let's move on to the overview, right? And this here states that um, the the future of brand marketing, as we know it, is going to be shaped by you know developed technologies, new things coming up, new innovations, new platforms, and you know new patterns as to which um, we can drive. Uh, we can you can drive you can actually drive your 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 brand right make your your brand known right so you can see that it now also says that if if your brand does not actually embrace these changes it means that you are not moving with the trend you're not moving with the time and um, it just means that if you are on top of things and you know you know how to um align your brand with these things and create a, a, creating a personalized and engaging uh and engaging content and uh, whatever it is that you're actually trying to push to your consumer, you can see that it will, it will actually mean that you will be on top of things and always uh, move with the times, right? So as a new as a new uh, as a new technology is coming in place, you're already aware of it, and not just jumping on every you know technology. It, it, all, it also matters. You have to actually have to use technologies that are actually um, actually meaningful to your brand. Right, so just not just because a TikTok is out and uh, you have to use TikTok for your brand and yeah, your brand doesn't actually align uh, align with that uh, platform, right? So it just means that you pick the technology, see see the one that actually suits your your brand, and then use it for it, and you can see that it would actually um, um, increase engagement on your brand, right? So this evolution is reshaping how businesses engage with consumers building brand loyalty and driving growth, right? It is supposed to be more personalized, immersive, and data-driven, right? Uh, leveraging content and technologies and innovative platforms. Another key thing that I, I did not mention is the power of data in this, um, with, the, with these technologies, right? As time goes on, you can see that um, new technologies are being developed that will help you actually analyze data more and know how to actually increase these sales, which is going to actually be part of the reason why your sales are going, your, your the marketing is going to be successful, right? Um, so let's speak about the rapid evolution of uh, marketing technologies, right? We can see that over time, different things are marketing has always been here, right? Um, I think uh, I can I can basically say it's been here for over a hundred years, but over time it keeps evolving, new things keep coming up, and um, I can say during for, for for this period or for the past decades, we've had um. 
significant changes. Right? You've had changes from the 80s to the 90s, to 2000s to this very moment. I can easily say that technologies that new technologies have been developed from 2020 to now till till this very day, this 2024. And over the years, a lot of things have changed, right? Over these past four years. And even this year, uh, we saw the we saw the introduction of chat GPT, right? And it's now part of like every business, like every literally everybody uses this. So we we'll speak about digital marketing, right? So the shift from traditional print, right? You have um people moving from you know broadcast media to digital platforms. I think some days ago I was on Twitter and I saw somebody saying um social media is now the new TV, right? You can see that a lot of people don't actually watch TV like they used to because every information that you want to get from the news, you you can just go on these platforms. A platform like X, you jump on it and you see trending news and, and all. So you can see the, the um, internet introducing the display ads, which is the Google display ads, search, search engine uh, marketing, SEO, the email marketing, you know, and this enables brand to, you know, reach a broader and more targeted audience online because obviously it piques people's interest. Right, then you have pro programmatic, uh, pro programmatic uh, marketing, right? This is also um, aut automating the buying and selling of ad inventory in real time. This technology uses algorithms and data analytics to deliver more precise and efficient ad placements, right? And a a uh, a good example of that is Google Ads, right? Um, you could use you could use certain programs to you know um, set your how how you want your your ad to be displayed. And a perfect example of it is probably maybe I want to search for. Um, something, maybe hospital near me, right? And you can see that, that when you do those kind of searches sometimes, you see that the, the top, you can see uh, some of them, you see um, by ads, right? This is showing, being shown to you by ads. And you can see that there are also different ads on it, on, on there, right? It now means that the one at the top actually has the like highest, you know, bid for for buying of those ad spaces, right? So that's like pro programmatic, uh, uh, marketing and then you have the social media marketing obviously you have uh, platforms like facebook instagram linkedin x um snapchat you know th this this actually they're actually very very um very important in terms of where you want to you know implement your strategy right and it also means that does your brand actually align do you have the, does your brand actually align with this um platforms right so you pick the ones that actually align with your with your, with your, with your brand and then you can actually um implement it. So these platforms offer sophisticated targeting options based on user demographics, interests, behaviors, allowing brands to create highly personalized engaging uh, and engaging campaigns. Um, if, if you're talking about analytics, for me, I would, um, my favorite out of all of them is LinkedIn, but then not all brands can be on LinkedIn and not all brands on LinkedIn can be on other platforms, right? It's very detailed. Um, then you have mobile advertising, right? Um, and with mobile advertising, you can see that um, it has gained prominence, and you can see mobile uh, mobile ads uh, while you're browsing on your on your browser. You see ads popping up on the website, and also you have apps where probably are using an app, and then you have this um, short ads that come up, which you just have to watch, right? Um, it also happens with um, on YouTube as well, while more on mobile on YouTube. You also have the SMS marketing. You have the location based targeting, providing. Uh, brands with opportunities to, con uh, to connect with consumers on the go, right? So whatever type of consumer you are, um, so far you have a mobile and you have an interest, definitely mobile advertising, any brand can reach, uh, you can reach um, your consumers. And then you have video advertising, right? Um, which has gained popularity since, uh, significantly since 2020, I would say since 2020, when um, you know, TikTok came into the scene. Um, you have um, platforms like YouTube, um, TikTok, and other streaming services. You have Netflix. You have, you know, you, people use those platforms as um, as uh, a, a perfect place to actually run your ads, right? So you can see that video ads are now highly engaging because people, um, people are, it, it now shows that a lot of people are interested in video ads, right? As opposed to when you when we create images and, you know, you post, uh, if you if you compare the way people actually view and see these platforms, you see that um, videos actually do a lot um, better. And then you have native advertising, right? Um, and this is actually very and a very interesting one, right? You, you 
see um, maybe a short video, uh, maybe somebody doing his skit, or maybe a, uh, um, a short uh, a movie, or maybe a podcast. You just see so you see the, the the brand position right there, right, and it's very subtle. But you would actually get the message that oh, this is actually an advert, right? Just the way you see in movies where you see a lot of Apple laptops, um, they don't need to tell you that that is actually it's actually an advert, right? And then you have the influencer marketing, right? Um, so this is actually another way to you know um, a new advertising avenue tapping into this influencer market, right? Tapping into their audience, collaborating with them, and then. Um, Getting, get, getting authentic connections with your audiences and enhancing your brand credibility. Because if an influencer who has an influence on a lot of people come, comes and vouches for your brand, it's I think it's a um it's a good start for 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 you know for, for a, a perfect brand awareness. And then you have artificial intelligence and machine learning, right? Um you see that it has it has revolutionized the the way you know um it targets the audience, right? Um, if you go on platforms like LinkedIn now and you want to run an ad, it gives you it now gives you like an option of oh do you want to use our AI um, AI boosted ads right and that means it just means that when you once you select that it it um, gives you like a a, a suggested um, targeting for 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 it to work but in some cases you might want to be very sure and then still go through the um, traditional route of okay or the normal route of well let me set my ad my, myself but then this the AI also actually looks at what your what your what your page does um the type of organization that your page is and then it actually um, creates those um those ad targeting for you and, and, and personalizes it for you as well and then you have the AR and VR that augmented reality and virtual reality which are <clears throat> creating immersive um, advertising experiences right makes you feel like you're actually right there. So brands use this to, uh, to use technologies to offer interactive and encouraging ads, right? Allowing consumers to visualize products in their environment to experience virtual simulations. And then you have blockchain technology where um, it's actually um, tries to analyze the the, the um, authenticity of your of any ads you are, you are running, also security into your digital advertising. So it helps um, combat um, ad fraud, ensures accurate ad delivery, and provides verifiable metrics, enhancing trust be between advertisers and consumers. Right. Um, so the importance of staying ahead. Right. So um, let's talk about the importance of staying ahead with this emerging technologies. Right. It gives you a competitive advantage. Right. Once you when you once you adopt these tools. Um, you can see that you, you can differentiate yourself, you, you, yourself from your competitors, and you stay ahead, right? And you get gain more consumer attention, and you you actually also establish yourself as industry leaders because you are right, you are like at, on top of things. Whenever any new any new technology comes out, your your brand is actually there to you know um, uh, to, to stay on top of things. And then you have enhanced uh, customer experience, which with a um, platform with AR and VR and AI, you can see that it, they will help you create like uh, a more personalized, interactive, and you know immersive experience for customers. Customers will feel like, oh, we are really actually interacting with this. Um, we are actually uh, interacting with this brand in real time, and then they actually want to you know tap into whatever it is that is being sold or whatever services that is being rendered. They actually want to be part of it because of how they feel part of your the experience, right? And then you have improved efficiency and um, ROI return on investment. Um, so technologies like AI, AI machine and um, AI and machine learning streamline marketing processes through automation and data analysis, right? So it does just means that once you once you get the uh, once the once the once the ta once they target the right people for you, they actually push it to the, the right type of consumers. And hope and and that would actually now drive conversions. So that actually create conversions for you, which now, which now increases the efficiency of the campaigns you are you are doing. And this will actually lead lead to better return on investment. So you spend money to run these um, ads, and then you start getting these returns because you have spent like um, you've invested in this um, in this analysis, this this type of automation, and you get a return. Right, and then you have the data-driven insights. Right, um, 
So leveraging your your the advanced analytics and big data, you know, it helps brands understand consumer behavior preferences and trends are, trends more deeply, right? And these insights inform strategic decisions, right? Allowing for more effective marketing strategies and, and the ability to quickly adapt to marketing changes. So you have this data where you can see, oh, okay, this is how people have been interacting with social, um, social content, which I pushed out. Um, the so brand that this brand that I actually um, did the, oh, for this, for this um, product I actually pushed out. This is how um, the type of people that actually uh, interacted with this. So it now helps you streamline and uh, arrange. Um, should I say what's the word? Should I uh, actually position you to actually do um, um, better when when when? Um, sorry, I'm looking for the word. Uh, when strategically running your ads. So you know the type of people you run a particular ad for and pick, you know, you pick your, um, a particular uh, demographic and for a particular type of ad, because you know, this is the type of people that actually um, um, like this particular type and then you use it for it. And then it also helps build trust and transparency, right? With technology like like, like blockchain, um, you can see that they help build with trust with consumers by ensuring the authenticity of the products protecting data privacy and providing very verifiable metrics for advertising performance. And then you have the long-term goals, right? You know, by adopting these technologies, right, it's it's a continuous process. Um, whenever something, whenever a new technology comes out, a new platform comes out and you use it effectively for your business, people will know that, yes, you are like at the forefront of this innovation. And yes, you are actually really trying your best as a brand to actually, you know, put them first, which is very key for consumers, putting your consumers first. So let's move to AI and advertising, AI and advertising, right? Um, so for AI and advertising, right, this AI actually enables, you know, hyper-targeted ads based on user behavior and their preferences, right? And we'll speak about some of um, this, uh, some of this, right, which is personalization, right? So how does AI help with personalization, right? It helps with data collection. So AI would gather like um, if, if, an, an, an amount of data from different people, from including their activities, the search histories, the social media interactions, the browsing patterns, and purchase history. I know everybody here has experienced a, a, a part where you go on Instagram and you'll be like, okay, let me look for maybe a, let me say a shoe vendor, right? And you look for a shoe vendor. And you see that over the past three, four days or five days, if you keep interacting, you see that you start seeing a lot of um, shoe vendors online, and then you now it's it, it just it's just what the AI the AI does it collects that the fact that you actually search for that and it's actually showing you more over time, right? Also, there's the behavior analysis, right? It's analyze it's a, 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 analyze the, the patterns and trends in the user behavior. Um, for example, if you just um, frequently searches for a fitness related content, the AI will recognize this interest. So over time, maybe you go to your, let me use Instagram as an example again, you go to your explore, you now start seeing that you have a lot of, you know, fitness related content in your explore. And then there's a preference identification, right? By understanding these patterns, patterns right? AI can determine the individual preference and predict what types of products or service a user is likely to be interested in. Uh, and this is to say, um, for example, um, going back to looking for a shoe vendor, if you're looking for a shoe vendor, um, possibly you might be looking for um, a shed vendor or a, uh, a pant vendor, right? And you want to maybe you want to get a shed. So it, it looks, it, it puts it in a group, right? Like, okay, this person is looking for a shoe, right? Next time, you might be looking for a trouser, right? So it, it gives it something related to that. Um, it might not be all up in your face, it might be subtle, but that's going to definitely happen over time. And then there's ad targeting. It uses this information. It enables um, uh, uh, hyper targeted advertising, right? Ensuring that users see ads that are highly relevant to their interests and needs, right? For instance, someone interested in fitness might see ads for workout equipment, health, healthy recipes, or gym membership. So now it's not just about fitness related content, uh, just about um, gyms, or maybe it now gives you like other things that are related to this, which I still spoke about in the previous one. And then you have the real time adjustments, right? So over time, obviously today you might search for shoe, tomorrow you might search for a TV, next tomorrow you might search for um something else. And over time it keeps learning, yeah, it keeps learning and adapting to what you know you are trying to actually achieve, 
right? And that's um, that's personalization in for AI, right? And then you have um, um, the case study for personalization, and, and a perfect um, uh, case study for this is Netflix, right? So for Netflix, Netflix recommendation system, you see that um, it actually captures your viewing history, right? So it tracks your viewing, your viewing history, what, sh what shows and movies, movie a user watches, right? Um, then the interaction that comes in where it sees how the way, the way you react to content, right? You saw a movie, did you like it? Did you like the way, did you, did you, did you watch this movie because of ratings? Or the, it says that, okay, um, over, a, over a scale of one to five, most of the most of the movies that you see are the ones that are only at maybe four point five, right? Um, it says that okay, you like movies that you only watch for maybe about you, only, you like movies that are only ninety minutes. You don't like two hours movies. You don't like sixty minutes movies. You like ninety minutes movies, and it now gives you like it takes all those things in, into consideration and see how 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 much you post and well, right? It also see checks your search queries, right? The, this term you the the terms you, um, users use uh, yeah. yeah um within the platform this is your, your the type of searches you make most of the time and takes it so this is data collection for netflix this is how it works and then for your behavior analysis right if it helps you it helps it, it helps it filters the type of um um viewing habits that you have right right from your data collection right and then from here you can see it says that if you if user a and user b have similar viewing histories right um, shows that user A likes, but user B hasn't seen, I recommend it to user B, right? So you have like two users, um, user A and user B, and they like like similar type of, you know, movies and all, but user B hasn't seen what user A has seen. It, rec it automatically recommends it to user B as well because he understands the pattern, um, he understands their viewing pattern, right? From the, from the data that it has collected, right? And then you have content-based filtering, right? So it just analyzes the characteristics of, of the content, content, right? Um, uh, the genre, the actors, the directors uh, that the user prefers and recommends, right? Somebody might say, okay, I like Martin Scorsese. I like Martin Scorsese movies, and then he goes sees a lot of Martin Scorsese movies, and um, over time, it will now recommend maybe a new Martin Scorsese movie, or maybe where Martin Scorsese was a um, producer, you know, he picks those type of movies things takes into consideration or you like a there's a washington it picks out a lot of the washington movies for you and you, you know it helps you with that and then you have the hybrid models right it combines multiple algorithms to, uh, for your accuracy and personalization so now you have a favorite director you have a favorite actor you have a um, kind of time timeline of movies that you like to watch then it picks all these things and you know creates a um it enhances your your viewing experience, right? So you have now so all of a sudden I'm coming to the Netflix, I'm seeing a Scorsese movie, I'm seeing a Denzel movie, I'm seeing a 90 minutes movie, I'm seeing a four a 4.5 rated movie over five, you know, so that's how it works, right? So you now you have the preference identification, personalized profiles, right? You see that every sometimes you can you can see that for some Netflix profiles, you have up to five, you know, maybe users. So each user has like their own home screen. The home screen, home screen can never be the same because everybody has their own type of um, viewing experience that they actually like. It could be a family of, for example, a family of three, the father, mother, and the child. Um, the father likes to watch Discovery, um, maybe Discovery movies, uh, or sorry, uh, movies that, that are related to, um, um, sorry, sorry, documentaries, by the way, sorry. And then um, the mother likes to watch sitcoms, and then the child, obviously, uh, cartoons and all. So you, you can see that by the time you visit everybody's home screen, it's usually different, right? And also the, the genres and the categories, right? It also personalizes, personalizes their suggestions with different um, categories that align with their interest. Um, so yeah, moving to moving on to AI in um, advertising, let's, let's speak about predictive analysis, right? So this um, actually, you know, takes like, um, it, 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 this is like AI using historical data and you know forecasting future trends and consumer behaviors. This advertisers this allows advertisers to make informed decisions, optimize campaigns, and anticipate market shifts. Right. So from from this um, from this predict, predictive analysis, um, it shows oh this is what worked in the past and this might be what will work in the future. So this is like 
a predictive analysis, like it states. It's predicting that this is what's going to happen in the future. So right, let's talk about the key components of predictive, predictive analytics, right? You have data collection, right? You have the historical data, collecting data from past campaigns, including performance metrics like click-through rates. So for example, you send out an email, um, and the email has different sections. Maybe it has one part is about maybe news, another part is about trends, another part is about events, right? And you can see that a lot of people are clicking on, you know, the news. It means that that's like what really drive drove con conversion in that email that was sent, right? So it shows the conversion rates, the and the engagement levels, and you can see that okay, this is what actually this is what people actually like the most. It means that maybe when next we are sending a newsletter, maybe we should have more news than more events in the newsletter so that people would actually, you know, um, engage with those in your newsletter. So you also have the consumer data, right? Um, gathering data on consumer behavior, preferences, and demographics from various sources such as websites, social media, purchase histories, right? You gather this information, and from this information, you, you can actually now predict and say, okay, this is how, for, um, moving on, this is kind of, you know, um, things that we should push out to the setting. Uh, then you have the data analysis, right? It has it you now it, it has a pattern recognition, right? Um, like I made reference to Instagram earlier on when it identifies your patterns and colorations in data, revealing your ins the insights about. So now that it sees that I'm actually liking or searching for this type of things, um, we we as a brand, we we as brand owner now or being in, in the position of uh, the person trying to market this brand now will understand that oh this type of person wants this type of thing and this is what we have so let's actually you know push out this type of content to this demo um, to this uh, people this type of people this type of ta uh, target audience and then you have the trend analysis right so it analyzes trends over time such as seasonal variations because of consumer interest interest or emerging market trends so that the marketing trends are actually um um, happening right now and then he picks this and says okay this is what is possible so let's let's take this analysis and try and create campaigns that would um, align with this type of trends in the future right and also it also uses like okay this is a possible market trend that's going to that's going to um happen in the future and then you have model building right yeah which is the predict you have predictive models and the machine learning right so for predictive models it creates um, you know, statistical models that use historical data to predict future outcomes. These models can forecast consumer, consumer responses to different types of ads, the effectiveness of various channels, and the optimal times to run campaigns, right? It's, um, so you can see that sometimes you want to run some type of ads to tell you, oh, you need to run this ad for seven days before it gets effective. You need to run this ad for um, a month before it's effective, right? Um, or maybe this type of content will not do. Sometimes you can even go on Meta, right? To try and run an ad, it can tell you that oh, you might not get a so result. And at, at the same time, you you push out some type of content, you can see that oh, it's telling you that you're going to get maybe you're spending the same amount of money on um, investment on, on a particular type of ad. But then once it tells you um, you're only going to get maybe about Five thousand to ten thousand, which when you push this, and then you use that same budget on another ad, and you, and you can you can still see that oh, you're going to reach over fifty thousand people, right? Just means that oh, this is kind of out, outcome that it predicts for you. So it actually works effectively. Predictive these predictive models. I think Meta has actually mastered this um, uh, in terms of these predictive models, and yeah, it's very effective. And then you have machine learning, right? Where you utilize you know machine learning techniques to improve the accuracy of predictions by continuously learning from new data and adjusting the models accordingly. Like I said, over time things keep you know new things keep coming up, new ideas, new um it can be new new search. Like I said, you can search for a, a you can search for a shoe today, tomorrow you can be searching for a TV. So while we are doing all that, the machine learning is actually taking everything into consideration and now is using it to predict type of you know ads to push out to these people. So let's talk about a case study for predictive ana analysis, right? So here you have an example, an e-commerce retailer, right? An e-commerce retailer wants to optimize the advertising strategy for upcoming holiday season, right? So what's the implementation? It takes a data collection, right? Um 
gathers historical data from the previous holiday campaigns, right? I did a campaign last year for um, Christmas, during Christmas season, and I, um, you know, and it, it was for sales, right? Including sales data, consumer demographics, and um, the ad performance metrics, right? That's one thing to take. The AI an analysis, right? What what analysis did you get, right? Um, the, retail, the retailer analyzes the data to identify patterns such as uh, which products were most popular, peak shopping times, and consumer customer preferences, right? Um, so you have, for example, you have um, some e-commerce retailers. So maybe we have a shoe bag, um, a makeup kit, right? And you can see that at the end of the day. When they did, um, when 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 the AI analyzed, it, see that the makeup kit, kit sold more. And look at the peak time, peak shopping times. Oh, in in a in a day, the peak shopping times were like by five pm to seven pm, right? And then what's what are the consumer preferences? Most of them actually liked, you know, this um makeup kit. So this this is that's an analysis, right? It picks what 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 works for what worked for you in the previous um um campaign that you pushed out. Then you have the predictive model, modeling, right? So the AI builds a predictive model to forecast which products will, will be high in demand and what type of ads will drive the most engagement. So from everything that, that's analyzed, it's an predict and say, okay, let's try and see. Because this it now means that when it comes to your brand, um, when it comes to that, your e that e-commerce platform, it means that people that actually now like makeup kits more. So it's now, you know, push out um, type of products in that range. It can now be something that along the line of mascara or nail polish, something that has to be like beautification, right? So that's not like the group in, in entirety, right? It's not just about um, the makeup kit anymore. It now means that what are related to makeup kits, right? So it now, now pushes out those things for you, right? Then you now have the campaign optimization. Right, so the, the retailer uses this insights to design a targeted ad campaign, allocate budget to the most effective channels, and schedule ads for times when consumer activity is predicted to be the highest. Right, you already have a peak period of five to, to seven p.m. So okay, maybe you can actually uh, focus your budget on that. Right, so the outcome. What was the outcome of this? The outcome: the retailer experiences higher engagement rates, increased sales, and more efficient use of advertising budget during the holiday season. So that's. That's that for predictive analysis. So let's speak about um, a virtual reality and augmented reality in advertising, right? And then um, this is, this one is quite very interesting as well, right? So you, the integration of VR and AR, which is the augmented reality in advertising, has revolutionized um, brand marketing by offering enhanced engagement and immersive experiences. Um, various times we've been to maybe um, sometimes game centers, sometimes you know. You could um and I know you and you you wear this you know um you have this um you have this um goggles one for you where it makes you feel like oh you're actually right there uh, to the extent that in some cases you even have um sensors attached to to you so you can actually have that real experience that you're actually right there right so you have so this creates like an immersive brand experience right so it allows brands to create like a fully immersive experience that can captivate and engage consumers in a way traditional advertising cannot, right? Um, if I'm scrolling through um, Instagram, I definitely cannot know, have that experience of, okay, um, actually in a place where I'm okay, like you can't have an image here, right? Somebody playing football, right? You can wear, in most cases, you can wear this Google's where um, you, you, you are literally there playing football and you actually feel you actually feel these things in real time and it feels like, oh, you're actually playing that football for real. Right? So we have, uh, virtual reality provides a simulated environment where users can interact with the, with the brand's world, right? You are right there while the AI overlays um, digital el elements into a real world, right? Enhancing physical environments. So these experiences make adver advertisements more uh, memorable and engaging, fostering stronger emotional connections, right? And this is, to say, okay, sometimes I, um, I've had an experience where I played a a horror a a game called like a residence residence evil, right? And when, when after I wearing this um, goggles, you it feels like we are, we are right there. So I was moving in, you know, in a in a in an empty house, an abandoned house, and before I knew it, you started seeing scary things, and it, it felt so real to the extent that I had to like remove remove this. The goggles from my from from my face, right? So that's that's kind of experience that brands also want to, you know, um, captivate 
while 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 you interact with their brands in a more friendly way, not like in that in that way that I was speaking about. So like um, you have the personalization and interact um, interactivity, right? So VR VR and AR now enables the personalization enable it enables highly personalized and interactive advertising experiences, right? Consumers can visualize products in their own space using AR or explore virtual showrooms and test products in VR. Would um would, would look at like uh, a case study. So this level of interactive activity will now allow consumers to engage with products on a personal level, right? I have first-hand experience on how this brand works. So there's no need for me to say, okay, let me test this product when uh, I've already tested it virtually or tested it with um AR, which is the augmented reality, right? And you, have, you now have increased consumer engagement, right? By offering these people this um your consumers this right this experience. To boost consumer engagement because they already have a a first hand experience on how this thing works, right? And users are more likely to spend time with and interact with VR AR content compared to traditional ads. Um, I, I'll say traditional ad, and I, I can also like swipe through it or maybe save it for later. But with AR and VR, you have to be right there and you have to experience it, and it translates to like a, a higher brand recall and stronger consumer um, loyalty. So it also it also enhances the storytelling, right? You are experiencing the story. Um, it could be I'm trying to tell a story about um, a a a a, um, a brand about a, a drink brand, right? And with this era, with this VR era, we can actually we can actually communicate these things in in that way. Um, brands can create like immersive narrative that place consumers at the center of the story, right? You are right there, you are experiencing it. You are seeing what's happening right there, or maybe they can try to try to tell you how this thing think this um, brand was created with their VR um uh, with, with the VR tool, right? And this form of storytelling is particularly effective for brands aiming to con convey complex messages messages or create emotional connections with their audience, right? And also then you have that an 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 analytics, right? So the use of VR and AI advertising also provides valuable data and insights, right? Brands can track how consumers interact with the VR, VR experience because you're right there, you're seeing people using it and you can see also how people say, oh, okay, this is what we like about your, um, this experience, right? So this that also helps refine the marketing strategies, optimize the content and deliver more targeted and effective campaigns, right? So let's look at the case study. Um, so right here you have um, a furniture, a furniture um, platform called the um, um, the IKEA place. Uh, I'm going to play this right uh, so you watch how this works. All right, so this is from the the, um, the IKEA place, right? And if you look at this, if you look at what the what the um, area used here, it actually takes measurements of the space that you have. So you have your camera, you take a you take a you take a um, you scan your your whole apartment, and it takes the measurements, right? And then you also, you now take that furniture from their from their their platform, then you place it in your sitting room, right there. So it takes that measurements. You can see where um, somebody was trying, um, the couple was trying to put um, a chair in between two walls. That's because they didn't get the perfect measurement and they just brought it home. Well, well we did here too. You can actually, you know, have measurement of your space, have measurement of the furniture, and you now place it right in your sitting room. And it, it gives you like a perfect experience. So that's for the um, IKEA, um, Ikea place. Sorry, let me move to the next. So for Coca-Cola, 
sorry. For Coca-Cola, Coca -Cola, this is the VR, the VR experience for Coca-Cola. This was done like oh, sorry. This was done years ago. Um, but it's still very valid because you know, like I said, it's um some 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 um some tools are going to be, you know, over time they'll they'll stand the test of time, right? And and let's so let's watch the virtual experience for the Coca-Cola Christmas roller coaster. It's a bit long, so I'm just going to probably cut it short at the point. Let's 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 go write it. So basically, um, this is this is um, the virtual experience going um, a Christmas going to, using a uh, virtual sleigh ride. I'm um, going to the moon, riding as Santa, and going to the moon. So this is basically the virtual experience that, that Coca Cola created for their Christmas campaign, right? And this was done a couple of years ago. And so this is basically it. Um, so let's just have a few seconds of it before we move on to the next um, part of this presentation. All right. Um, so from this from this from this video, you can see that you know it gives you like um, an experience. Um, Coca Cola was trying to achieve um, give everybody the Santa experience. You trying to be a Santa and have you have you have that um, the roller coaster ride as a as the Santa during Christmas season. And this is one way they used to you know engage with their audience. So moving on, um, let's speak about the emerging platforms and media. Right. We have the social media evolution. Right. Uh, and then from from sharp evolution, you can see, you know, you, you can see the um, uh, uh, platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels. This platform centered around short short form video content and the new revisional, uh, revisionalizing how brands engage with audiences, creating new opportunities for creativity, virality, and um, consumer interaction. So right, let's speak about the rise of short form video content. Right, so so we. Actually, witnessed this. I, I I believe we witnessed this in 2020 during the um, COVID-19 lockdown, where uh, TikTok came came in and there were a lot of trends. People were doing videos because people were, people were home, so it was a very perfect way to actually interact with people. And then also came the um, Instagram Reels. Um, I think before it was called Insta yeah, it was not. Um, I think it was called Instagram IG Story. Um, before it became Reels. Um, I don't think there's Instagram IG Story anymore. Uh, I haven't seen that for a while. Right, right. So you have like Instagram reels, um, the TikTok, right, and not actually it actually caters to you know decreasing attention span for of modern consumers, right? Providing quick, engaging, and easy, easily, uh, easily digestible um, content, right? This format allows brands to capture attention swiftly and convey messages, um, softly, right? So it means that, um. So if I was somebody that was seeing a lot of still image ads before, and then I started, you know, seeing these videos, and 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 then you, you can now see that a lot of uh, analytics in for, for the past few years, uh, or maybe you should I say reports show that uh, uh, video content has been doing very well. That has been actually that brands that actually do video content actually make more sales than brands that actually um, uh, use still contents, right? Then you have TikTok, right? Let's speak about TikTok, right? So TikTok has emerged as a powerful um, platform for brand marketing due to its algorithm-driven content discovery and emphasis on viral trends, right? So you, have, you can see a lot of trends that are 
like social media trends are coming up now. A lot of them are from TikTok, right? So the brands that can leverage TikTok's features to create engaging, authentic, and often playful content that resonates with younger audiences. So this doesn't mean that every brand has to jump on TikTok. You can have a brand that does not have any business with TikTok. I'm just, this is just like um, speaking to the type of brand that you are. If your brand is going to, um, if your brand actually aligns with the power of, you know, um, TikTok, then you can actually use TikTok. But it doesn't mean that everybody has to use this. Then you have Instagram reels, which, which is more friendly to, I would say it's more friendly to almost almost all brands, but not all brands, right? But then you need, it, it offers brands the ability to create short videos um, that, that, you know, that establishes them in the Instagram ecosystem. So, for example, I've seen a lot of videos that has to do with, um, maybe a lot of videos that has to do with corporate governance, for example. And then, with Instagram Reels, it now starts giving me like suggestions about those type of videos on the long run. So this integration allow brand, allows brands to reach their existing followers, also attract new audiences through Reels. Like you have a discovery feature right, right now. If you watch a video, um, if you watch a Reel on Instagram, you can see that at the end of the end at the end of the Reel, it says discover more. You know, discover more Reels, and then you now you know you now click on it and see more Reels that are in the same line. As what it, what it is you've done, right? So the sim the seamless integration with Instagram story stories and the main feed provides brand with multiple touch points for engaging cost um, consumers. So I post a reel, I post it on my story, and now we, on on your story now you can post videos as long as one minute. So if your reel is even forty five seconds a minute, you can use your story as well and promote. So yeah, it offers you like a very broad range of um, uh, places to use to promote your brand. So right, you, have, you now have also you now have leveraging influencer partnerships and user generated content, right? And these strategies are transforming how brands connect to consumers. Like it helps, it helps brand connect to consumers. It helps them build trust and helps them foster authentic engagement. Right with influencer partnerships, right? You can see that um it's it's it taps into different individuals who, who, who are the influencers, anyways. And these influencers are often, are often seen as trusted figures with a niche, right? Can create a gen genuine connections with their audience, making their endorsements highly effective, right? So, for example, you have a, uh, should I call him an Okay, that's not an influencer. Okay, for example, you have somebody like, um, probably maybe somebody like Don Jazzy, you know, promote something, although he does a lot of that for people these days. You have somebody like that promote your brand. You know that, yes. It's getting to so so million of people, it's so, so so number of people, and if this person can actually vouch for these people, it means that they're actually legit because this person also has their own, um, they also have their own brand to protect. So you can see that some in some cases, um, you you, you can even reach out to some influencers, right, and you want to work with them, and they're like, oh, what does your brand do? You can see that some of them, if if they do not actually. Um, align or they don't they don't agree with what your brand does or they don't feel your brand is authentic enough they would reject it right um they reject it and tell you oh we don't want to work with you or this doesn't align with the type of content that we push out and you know, like they can just come with different excuses right but I think one of the key things that scares some of them is the authenticity of your, your brand so once your brand is good and the influencer has tested this it's and promotes it you can see that it's an abuse and authenticity and trust. It, um, it has a targeted reach. It, it actually creates um, creative collaborations because you have on platforms that you have collaborative posts here and there. Um, also enhances the engagement, right? When you have your own platform, you have your own type of audience, but then when you collaborate with these influencers, you also reach a new a new level of engagement because it means that your, your, your target audience and their target audience will be reached promoting your own product. Or services. So you have the UGCs, right? User generated content. And this involves create, creating um, uh, content created by consumers that features a brand's product or services, right? This organic form of content is, is powerful in building community, enhancing authenticity, and driving engagement. With UGCs, you get the following, right? Your user generated content, you can see, um, for example, you have a, a, a baby shop, right? Um, um, using there's a, a baby shop called Always Me, right? And uh, oftentimes for Always Me, you see that most of their co customers actually pick their, um, once they get their products, they take pictures because they love the product because Always Me does like, they, want, they do wonderful 
products. Their products are authentic and the quality is actually very good. So this, you can see that their, their customers usually take pictures, send it to them. And when you go to, when you see their page, you see that there's a lot of, you know, you have a lot of um, user directed content on their page from customers. Most of the pictures you see there are from their customers. Um, I wish I could jump there right now, but uh, yeah, because of time. So you, you can see that you just will get you the follow to give you to, to build a community, it will create authenticity and credibility and um, cost effect, effective marketing leverage, leveraging, right? Um you're not paying for you're not paying, you're not paying those your customers to send you pictures. You just really like it and they, they, they send it to you and, and, and they give you like the permission. You can use my picture, you can use this picture because I really like your product. The product was good, right? And then you have also you have you can actually tap into type of diverse content. Different types of content, right? So let's give another example of a UGC, right? Which is the Coca-Cola Share Co campaign, which was very huge. I don't think there's nobody that does, there, there, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know this campaign, right? Where um everybody keeps looking for their name. So it, it now got to a point where people get to um supermarkets and look for their name on bottles before they can actually buy it. And then they take these pictures, post it online. Now, this is also like a leverage for Coca-Cola. They, they, they actually made like a, a serious amount of sales. And this happened in, um, this happened like, I think it happened globally, but it was very pronounced in Africa, right? And you are seeing that, oh, people's name, you see Anamata, you see, you know, and they're like, oh, so Coca-Cola knows this name and all that. But it's just that way of, just a way of them tapping into, you know, personalization of um, uh, of, of their consumers and pe making people feel part, like part of their community. So everybody now feels like, ah, Coca-Cola knows my name. so. Right, right, and all that. So that's that. That's the beauty of of UGCs. And uh, then you have um streaming services, right? So so you you have streaming services like right now we have streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime. Um, you know they've been they, these platforms have become the they've become the new frontier for brand marketing, right? And all these platforms, you see that you have like ads running on these platforms, right? Sometimes you watch a video and maybe when you are trying to move in move to another video you, you just get um get to see it or it could be into um even the movies that you watch on those platforms right but then at the same time um you have them like they are they're, they're, they're right there but they're not all over your face they're subtle they're very uh, they're, they're very they're, they're not so pronounced but you can actually you actually get the message right so like let's talk about the strategies for seamless ad integration right you have the team advertising which is the native ad to match the look and feel of the content that they appear within, right? By seamlessly integrating into the viewing experience, these ads are less disrupt disruptive and more engaging. For example, an in-show in product placement or a brand a branded touring line can suddenly promote a product without interrupting the viewer, right? You have these things of, oh, okay, you have, we've seen like different types of videos where somebody complains about a certain product and then, oh, but well, this is why I always thought I used, I didn't have five pronouns, but then you can also see where maybe on a dining table, um, so somebody having dinner, and then you have that product on the table, and then you can just see the name showing, showing. or you can even see some videos where people drink water, they drink bottled water. In some cases, you see that most of the times, some, some of the times you see that the names of um, the bottle have, have been taken out because they're not trying to promote that brand for them. But in the case where you see, for example, you see an ever ever water on the table. You know that yes, these people are actually trying to promote ever water, right? Because it now means that they are doing promotions for um for ever water, um, and it's they are not putting into your face like oh come and buy ever water, but it's right in the video video, and maybe it's an influencer, maybe somebody that you actually like, maybe it's an actor, whatever, whoever the person is, right? And they're like, okay, this is nice. I should get this product, right? Yeah, and this also happens even with. Outfits too with celebrities and all. They have also you also have product place placements, right? So this involves incorporating products into storylines of shows or movies. This method subtly, uh, subtly highlights the product in natural settings, including brand visibility without traditional ad interruptions. You don't have to scream about it, but it's right there. You are seeing it. You, they're not telling you, but yes, you are seeing it. So then you have sponsored, sponsored content. So you have and this is this involves you know brands partnering with streaming services to create customized content that aligns with the brand brand's message, right? This could be a form of branded series, short films, or documentaries that provide value to viewer while promoting. And then you have interactive ads, right? This if this invites viewers to engage directly with content, right? You have, I know 
a lot some sometimes you must must have come across maybe some ads that will tell you um complete this puzzle to see you know what is at the end right so you have like these ads that, that, that can include clickable elements quizzes or games that viewers can interact with using their remote or mobile device or you know making the ad experience more immersive right so sometimes you can actually be like maybe on an app and then you come across an ad maybe for a game and that game that game will actually give you a maybe like a 15 or 20 seconds experience to actually play the game and then when you play the game and you find it interesting you actually be tempted to click on that ad and go and download the game so that's like an experience giving you that experience and making you feel like oh yes i can now you know enjoy this game it gives you the first time experience and then you want to um experience it then you have the shoppable tv um ads right this this allows viewers to purchase products featuring the content directly from their screens right so it, it could mean the link from you know the link to the page. Once you click on, click on the link, you go you go you go straight to what you want to purchase. It happens on YouTube a lot as well. Yeah, you 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 be watching one video, something pops up, and you can click on it and you know purchase. Yeah, that place. And sometimes you can see that maybe you search for something on your website, maybe on like maybe search for a product on your website, and then you go on YouTube. You're still seeing that, that those ads right there. YouTube in YouTube because they've actually done like a proper um, promote, um Google ad promotion that actually cuts across all these platforms and then the AI has also lent your pattern and then it's taking that those those steps to 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 you actually taking those and then we have the voice search right moving on to voice search right so the increased adoption of voice activated services like Amazon Google Assistant Apple Siri the Apple Siri is reshaping landscape of brand marketing. As consumers become more comfortable using voice commands for everyday tasks, brands must optimize their marketing strategies to leverage voice search and smart speakers effectively. Right? This shift presents a unique opportunity to reach audiences in a more conversational and interactive manner. Right now, we have we have so, sometimes even to the extent of even activating your phone touch light now. Some people don't even use; they don't need to start scrolling to their you know go to go to their menu to put on the touch light anymore. You got like for like for um for, for um Android phones, you can just make like Lumos and you now say Nox, you know, you, you, you put on your your um touch light and put it off, right? So for strategies for optimizing voice activity devices, right? You have conversational keywords, right? So these voice searches tend to be more conversational and natural in tone compared to text searches, right? Brands should focus on long tail keywords, right? You have a long tail keyword and phrases that reflect how people speak, incorporating natural language into their SEO strategy, right? So you have these keywords that you can you, you can actually use for your brand, or okay, um, for 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 me to, for you to actually um for people to actually get this thing, they should use this type of keywords, right? So your long tail keyword can pick different types of words from that your long tail keyword, right, and use it for this experience, right? Then for featured snippets, right? You have on on um, this securing featured snippets on search en engines, right? Increases the chance of being selected as as the answer for voice queries, right? Brands will aim to provide concise, clear, and informative answers to common questions, right? So I I click on maybe a Google um Google voice search, and once I click on the search, uh, if my if my um if my information are are, are concise, clear, and informative, right? Um, and they ask a question, and and then it now aligns with what I used. It would actually just pick this and you know give the person the perfect search, and I might be on top of the list, list, right? And then you have the local SEO optimization, right? So many voice searches are location based, such as finding nearby the service um, services or stores, right? And when once you optimize for local SEO, including updating Google My Business listings and um, incorporating local keywords. This will now help you know help you capture these searches, right? So if I you know do that search based on my location and somebody is maybe two kilometers or a kilometer away from me and they make that search, they'll definitely find your brand close close by because yes, you actually um uh, optimized your your local SEO for for that voice search. So you have then you have the dot uh, structured data markup, like, right? So you have you implementing data markup, like schema.org um, on websites help search, search engines understand the content better and improve the chances of being featured in voice search results, right? So brands that 
use the structured data to highlight important information such as business hours, locations, and, and product details. We now, you know, we now get um, we now get this um, um, this markup right. It now means that once people um, search for for um, for these things for your like like business hours based on your location, it gives like a perfect definition of what your brand is into. Um, it kind of the, your business hours, your location, like gives you more structured um voice search right it shows a perfect uh, example of the type of brand that they need when it when it when they search so that's how um, effective it is right so you have also have content creation for voice search right creating content specifically designed for voice search can can improve visibility so this includes you know FAQs how to guides and conversational blog posts that directly addresses common voice queries right you do a voice query it can take you to maybe a blog post that, that speaks about what you just asked, or it can also um, lead you to the a, a frequently asked question on on a particular uh, particular platform, and that's how that works. And then you have the voice commerce integration, right? So for e-commerce brands, integrating voice commerce capability capabilities allows customers customers to make purchases directly through voice activated devices, right? Streamlining the voice purchasing process right can enhance convenience and drive drive sales right so you make you make a request or um you, you make a command like uh, speak to your um make a command to your um a speaker right and and it now gives you a should i say gives you a, a suggestion of uh uh brands that <clears throat> That, that that you can actually purchase from right also you can also activate your you can also implement your product into these voice activated devices that's the way they can search for you if your if your brand is not part of this um voice search community or voice activated devices even if i search for you from now to tomorrow i'm not going to like find that brand right so it's very important that for every um for if, if you are if you are, if you are activating yourself your brand for um an activated device, you give a perfect keyword, a long term keyword like previously stated, and this will now help people purchase easily through those devices, right? And then we'll move on to identifying opportunities, right? So how do we how do we identify opportunities? With, you know everything that we've spoken through, um, which is the um, AI and advertising, VR, um, v, uh, VR and AR. So how do you identify opportunities, right? So you have the power of big uh, big big data, right? So Big data encompasses large volumes of structure and structured information, right? From various channels, including social media, web analytics, customer transactions, and more. So you, when you have access to this data, right, you analyze it, right? It helps you uncover the insight. It looks, you look into the consumer behavior. You see what works. You see the time of months that you know this type of things, this uh, this type of uh, things, uh, this type of uh, product was purchased. The timing. Um, the age, the age group, the location, you know, so you have access to like all this data and you can make use of use of it. So like, so let's speak about the strategies for like leveraging big data, right? So collecting and integrating data, right? So brands should collect data from various sources, including the CRM, yes, the uh, uh, CRM systems, the social media, website analytics, and third-party data providers. So integrating this data into a unified platform allows for comprehensive analysis and actionable site insights, right? You have your information now, how best do you want to use it, right? How best do you want to use it in the future? Because you don't actually want to, you know, create a budget where you just spend and get nothing in return, right? You also have to segment your audiences, right? You know, with your advanced data analytic tools, you can segment audiences into specific groups based on various criteria. Um, this segmentation allows brands to tell their messaging and offers and, of, and offers to meet the unique needs and preferences of each group. You have an age group of 15 to 20, you have another age group of maybe 30 to 40, and you know you know what they want, and you know the kind of brand that you have, and maybe your brand tenders to those type of age groups, you know the type of things that you want to offer to 15 to 20, you know what you want to offer to people between the ages of 30 to 40, and all that, and that's how it basically works, right? So you also it also helps you personalize content, right? So with this data insight, it can help you create like a personalized content that speaks directly to individual consumers. So this personalization can be applied to email marketing, social media ads, 
website content and more and more to increase engagement and conversion rates, right? Also, you can this also helps you to optimize that your ad spend, right? By the time you have a particular the a, a, the right insights, right? You now focus your energy, costing, um, analytics to you now allocate your spend more effectively to this group of people by identifying these channels, times, and formats that, that perform best. Brands can optimize their budgets to maximize your ROI, right? So then you now have um, the, the, the AI and machine learning, right? Um, so using artificial intelligence and machine learning can analyze vast amounts of data quickly and accurately. These technologies can uncover patterns, predict outcomes, and automate decision-making processes, enhancing effectiveness of data-driven market. So this is just an assistance from the AI and machine learning tool and can also give you like a perfect you know, um, analysis into what you need to do for um, um, your, 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 your ads that you want to run. Uh, so moving on, we have the cross plat we have the, we have the cross platform campaigns right so the ability to create cohesive campaigns can effectively span multiple platforms uh, multiple platforms the, the ability to create right um sorry sorry um sorry i made a mistake uh, so this from the from the ability to create a cohesive campaigns that effectively span multiple platforms we can continue to improve the future of brand marketing so by you by using this cross -plat um, cross platform campaigns uh, right you have you, you can integrate uh, platforms such as social media, email, websites, um, traditional media to deliver a unified and consistent messaging. Right, you have the same like you 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 promote your brand across all these platforms effectively, reaching like um um giving everybody a brand experience because you have different type of people on different platforms, right? And then once you actually now have a unified um information across these platforms, it means that. You are also seen as an, an authentic brand. So this approach ensures that consumers encounter a seamless brand experience regardless of the platform they use. By, le by leveraging this cross-platform strategy, brand, brand can you know, reach a wider audience, enhance brand, brand consistency, optimize engagement, track and analyze platforms. So you have different platforms and it helps you analyze you know, different types of you know, performances on different platforms because what is going on on Instagram is not what's going on on LinkedIn is not what's going on on X, and it's not what's going on on even Facebook. In as much as Facebook and Instagram sounds like they are literally, they are all the same body, but they also have like a different body of you know audience. They have interactive and shoppable ads, right? Um, so we can see that brand marketing is secretly leaning towards interactive and shoppable ads, like we we addressed, which is um via the VR, the AR, the AI in advertising, and you know you can. And these shoppable ads are integrated into advertisements, allowing consumers to make instant purchases, right? This innovative approach combines engaging content with seamless buying options, enhancing shopping experiences and driving sales, right? So once people are once people are feeling like this, we can engage with, engage with this brand, obviously it's going to increase the way they actually engage with the brand and you know make purchases or maybe use your product, your services. So how do we implement these strategies, right? For social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, they offer built-in shopping features that allows brands to create shoppable posts and ads. You can create a shoppable ad, you create an ad, as, and it takes you to your your shopping platform. Instagram has a um a shop a, a a shopping platform, right, where you can go and purchase. Even WhatsApp business, WhatsApp business right now, you can. Go on WhatsApp uh, business, and you have the you open the person's business on the number, and you see a lot of products that you can purchase directly. And the person gets the order, and then you know it sends the order directly to you. Then you have video content, right? How do you implement video content? You, you by, by you know incorporating shop shoppable elements into video ads on platforms like YouTube, through streaming services where you can actually just click and you know. Uh, click on the products and then you learn more and you make a purchase. That's how to implement. Then for AR, AR has provides an immersive shopping experience, which we've already we already saw um the IKEA place where you know you actually placed different um furnitures in different spaces and actually also get, gets you like measurements so detailed. 
So brands that create a, a, a create interactive AR experiences that let consumers try and project products virtually even before buying, right? And then you have influencer partnerships. Collaborative influence, influencers create shoppable content that can leverage that, that that can leverage their reach and credibility, right? Influencers can showcase products. You can get give your products to these influencers. Maybe you're trying to sell like a snack, a maybe a changing brand and you want an yeah, influencer, you send it to them, you know, and they showcase it in their videos and you know also put a link, oh you you want to actually get what I'm eating or blah blah blah. And then you click on that on that link and then that is right right there. And then you have the e-commerce integration, right? You integrate integrate e-commerce capabilities into your ad formats on the websites and mobile apps that that can drive sales directly from, from display ads. Once you click on it, it takes you, okay, can I click on this? Once you click on this, it takes you to the order, it takes you to your, maybe your um, payment platform, and then you just purchase it directly and, and you go and it and it's like really like easy for, for them because they don't have to go through the hassle of oh, visiting the website, um, creating sometimes you, some of them have to like even create a profile before they can actually push purchase. So what's the future outlook, right? Let's look at the future outlook of this, right? So the integration of AI, uh, virtual reality, and augmented reality, and emerging platforms, right? So it will now the future of marketing will significantly will be reshaped by integrating as AI, VR, and AR and emerging platforms. And these technologies will, 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 will create a revolution in the way brands interact with co consumers. And how would how would that happen for AI, which is artificial intelligence? It will enhance targeting and data analysis for more personalized and efficient marketing strategies. And for VR and AR, to create immersive and interactive experiences that engage consumers in creative ways. So you know you can come up with different kinds of things that will make people interested in the way you interact, interact with your product. It's, uh, you know, and that's I think it's like one of the most interesting parts of you know this brand marketing, allowing people actually experience. Your product first hand, and then you have emerging platforms, right? Right. You have different platforms. We 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 know we saw different platforms coming up, coming up, and uh, more of them are like uh, more of them are actually coming up. Something new might come up that is totally different from the TikToks, the Instagram, and all, and it might be very interesting to see. But we'll see how that goes. So we'll always like you have to also be in the know of um what trend is coming up. Um, one trend is coming up recently or what one new trend is coming up right i think sometime last year when threads came out it's it, it was looking like it was going to like be successful in as much as there was, there was a serious drop down in the case of maybe x you know uh calling them out for copy, copyright issues but when threads came out it came it came out with a kind of a, a kind of trend right using the name thread alone right so it was an interesting thing to see but after a while you know it's the um the reach actually reduced so as these technologies advance, they will transform the advertising landscape, making it more dy dy dynamic, engaging, and effective. Right? Because every day there are new innovative um, ways to actually promote brands. Because eventually, we might actually look at some of these things that we discussed here today as like, oh yeah, it's the future. But as time goes on, some new things will come out, and it's always important to all always be you know and try to understand. Okay, this is what is going to be perfect for my brand. So just because um, we've spoken about a lot of these things here. It does not mean that everything that we spoke about here might be perfect for your brand. It depends on the type of um, niche that you that 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 you promote or the type of um um uh, should I say type, the type of um products and services that you offer. That's that's the best way you can. Then that's what, how you can now actually maybe get the marketing team, speak to them. Oh, this is what would be good for my brand, you know, and you create strategies that will actually align with your brand. So let's look at continuous learning and adaptation, right? We have to continuously you have to, you know, look at its technolo technological advancements, right? So we can we can see now that we're speaking a lot about AR, VR, um, um, AR, VR, AI, and the new digital platforms and all. Um, but then you also have to, you know, also be in the know of new things that, that might come up, right? This are the like training things now, and it looks like as time goes on, they're going to be. An effective way that they will be developed, but as time goes on, you also need, need to, you know, um, leverage new tools and techniques effectively, or even vis revisit these tools and see how best you can use it for your brand. 
and then uh, also changing consumer behavior, right? This is something you also need to actually study. Um, study the behaviors constantly because the behaviors are constantly, you know, evolving. So just because something is working for you now doesn't mean on the long run it might be working for the, in the next 10 years, right? So you need to understand and adapt to what people want, right? To meet their shift in demands. Then you have the comp competitive edge, right? So you so you can see that if you prioritize the continuous learning and adaptation, you will be better positioned than your your your, your competitors. Uh, for example, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, brand into maybe I'm into uh, I'm into the selling of food and um, I sell food and my competitor sells food. My competitor feels like oh, the traditional way of marketing is still the way, or maybe let me just keep doing promotions on. Um, uh, on some of, some of these platforms, new things are coming out, new styles are coming out, new platforms can be be out there, right? Right? Like you have, for example, like as I was saying, we are making an example of someone someone selling food, right? There's child deck now, right? Well, do you think? Don't you think that brands on child deck, as compared to maybe a, a brand that's not on on these platforms, will, will actually um, sell better? So, so brands on child deck definitely have more. They actually reach more. Um, audience, more people, more targeted audience, right? Because they're offline and they're online. You know, the other person that is actually just um, doing it offline will feel like, oh, I'm doing well. But then you get, they, eventually they'll see that somebody's out there ordering food for me, and I don't need, they don't need to come to my my um, my eatery to actually make a purchase because I can send it right to them. So that's an, like an edge. So eventually we need to actually, you know, look at how you know how you can stay ahead of your competitors because every day um every day a new individual comes out and it's all, always very important for us to be um, at, um on top of things right and then there's a there is an improved marketing um, effectiveness so by regularly updating their skills and knowledge right uh, marketers can improve their, the effectiveness of their campaigns so this leads to better targeting higher engagement and increasing return on investment and then there's agility in crisis management, right? So you, you have an unpredictable world, right? And the ability to quickly adapt to new circumstances, such as economic shifts and global events can make significant difference, right? Like what happened during the COVID-19. And you can see a lot of companies, you know, you know, adapted quickly to it. And you will see that a lot of people actually made more money during that period. And that's how, like, that's like, and that, that's the power of adaptation, right? So, right, so these are strategies for continuous learning and adaptation, right? So you have an ongoing education and training um, in as much as you might want to actually give out this, your marketing um, your, your marketing goals or your marketing um, uh, projects to maybe you want to outsource it to um, companies. You also need to also make sure that your your, your team, at event, you, you invest in, in them have regular trainings, you know, workshop courses to keep the marketing team updated on the latest trends and technologies. Um, for one, here at FutureSoft, we 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 put that like it's on top of the list for us. Um, we we always learn. We have access to you know courses. We we try to learn new things and ensure that yes, we are we we are on top of things and ensure that we are not left behind following the trend. Also, you also have to embrace the culture of innovation and inquiry, right? Just because. Something works, like I mentioned earlier, does not mean you have to stick to it all through because it might stop working eventually. So you have to, you know, value curiosity, experimentation, innovation, allow teams to test new ideas and learn from both success and failures. Failure is also part of success, but it doesn't have to mean it doesn't have to mean that you have to fail continuously. And then you have to monitor industry trends. You keep an eye on industry publications, reports. You know, and thought leaders. Who are thought leaders in space? Who are thought leaders in your space? And you know, you learn from, you know, these things. Um, regularly reviewing the sources helps, you know, marketers stay informed about new developments and best practices. And then you have to leverage your, your data and analytics, right? You have to take these insights to understand consumer behavior, campaign performance, continual analysis and iteration based on data that, that help refine strategies and achieve better outcomes, right? You can use this to help your refine your strategy, right? With the data, you might work on the strategy and you know, based on what you put together, you feel like this is what's going to work. But eventually, maybe your your when you look at the data analytics, data an, an, analytics, you see that oh, this is what actually works. It helps you refine your strategy. 
over time. So you can also always revisit your strategy year in year out to see what, what is working and what has been implemented and what is not working, right? And then you can also engage with the marketing community, right? You participate in different types of conferences, webinars, and networking events, engage with peers and experts for foster knowledge and sharing, um, knowledge sharing and provide fresh perspectives, right? And this is like very important because you need to know what is going to work for your brand and what is not. So with that, we come to the end of this presentation. Um, please, if you do have any questions, I'll be very glad to take them. Thank you very much. All right, in the absence of questions, we can now bring the session to an end. Please note that this video will be available on our YouTube channel. And if you have questions while watching the video, kindly drop them in the comment section. We'll be very happy to answer your questions. Join us next time for another session and have a lovely day. Thank you. All right, thank you for joining. Um, take care, everyone.